Okay, back onto the T4 build today. I've put a stop to the Transit Custom. I'm waiting for the windows, side and rear. Uh, I've got those on order and then I can finish the carpeting. And then hopefully when this one's finished and up for sale, I'm back onto the Custom. <clears throat> today I'm finishing off the shelves at the back here I've made. I've got the doors cut out. I need to T-trim, route and T-trim the inner sections here, fit the handles. But I think until I've done the rest of the units, I'm just going to make sure they're fit, basically. Um, I've made up some inner shelves. One which will go... I got the wrong one. <laughs> basically, that one will go here. Other one will go the other side with the leisure battery underneath. What I've got to do now is move the rock and roll bed back, open it to see where the cutoff point is for the extra width there for the fridge I'm fitting and the SMEV sink and gas hob. So get the bed back, measure the floor out finish off the rest of the units and get the bed back of the transit out of the way. Okay that's the, the bed location. Back there obviously the floor will be done and the plastic strip there reconditioned put back on. Just touching the side there with decent gap there so it's not scraping or any dramas getting the bedding off the bed. Round to the front. Good cupboard on the front there, front access. Uh, that door, I'm happy with that to work out well. I don't like them when they're cut at an angle. So that gives me X amount of space to I think the shelving is going to have to come up to here because I've got a 40 litre fridge to go in. There needs to be enough gap for the sink. Uh, it's normally the outlet that gets in the way. We'll find out the location there where the power comes in for the split charger. Diesel heater fitted, cable in ready to go in. So next job, get the bed forward to see the opening point. Uh, I've got a feeling it's going to be the end panel will be quite close to there. Diesel heater vent will need pulling around a bit and then it's that unit out and measure where it can come from there for the <coughs> front units. Okay, that's the bed out and in place. It's as far back as I can go there. bed open, happy with that. Good storage there, I prefer those when they're like that. 40 litre fridge, a little tight. Obviously there's going to be a gap. I've got the drainage there, I means this has got to come, top shelf has got to come quite tight into sort of here. It is what it is, I'd rather do that than order a 30 litre. I'm only going to have the same problem if I put that in the uh, custom. Um, anyway, there's enough room here. Obviously go further right there. Enough room for the outlet for the diesel heater. Put the units edge either side. Give a good finish. Maybe something across the top. Heat shield on top of that. Because it's going to be I think about an inch between the outlet and uh, pipes etc there. Enough room for the water and grey water there and uh, storage area behind. USB ports there with the access from here for the electrics. Um, yeah, crack on, mark the floor, get the units cut, make the units up. Next. Uh, bed closed. 
that can be removed and come back when the van's ready. Looking forward to that. Okay, fridge location. I've basically put it no more than that. Could be a little bit too close to that diesel heater when it's on full tilt. That's moved slightly, but front of the fridge there. Based on that, the bed will come to here. Obviously, bed closed there. Um, possibly a centre shelf. Not too sure where yet. Where yet. Need to work out uh, the width, depth, length of the water containers that I've got. Front of this unit, uh, possibly to this edge. I think that to there, it's going to come back to here. That's more than enough for a worktop area. <coughs> Obviously coming out um, on there. That'll be the same 15mm ply and I found a fairly local guy in Tamworth that does 0.8mm uh, for mica for the top and um, that means I can still use the 15mm tea trim on the edges. Hopefully if not it'll be thicker stuff and 18mm tea trim. Okay, bed out. Okay, van clear, floor marked. That's the setup I've got for the leisure battery and the split charger. That needs securing. I've done it that way because you could put another leisure battery there. It's kind of trying not to use here use dead space the shelf and the inner panel will come to there that can be lifted out to get to the leisure battery and obviously you can lift it out if you need to i'm going to do some kind of location points left and right of the battery uh, okay now on to the unit that i've made up at the back I need to get that finished off back in the van and secure it's basically just made a pair of 15 mil grayed out See the door there. Central shelf here, access to the bottom and the top, and the other shelf here. See the battery will be there, and you've access to another cupboard here. Done the top like that. I don't know how to finish that to be honest, but you make a tea trip here. I'll just leave it. It actually looks quite good when it's in the van. Obviously cupboard on the front there. Get that to the back unit in. You're done. Push button catches. This will have actually not secure it's in place. To the ledger battery down there. Some sort of handle on it so you can lift it out. And round to the back. Upper storage. Lower storage. Door front. Push button. Okay, tomorrow the shelves at the front there. Okay onto the kitchen units. I uh, secured the section at the back there for support for the worktop and something to come off for the <clears throat> two pieces coming out here here for the fridge and we've got a panel across the top of the fridge uh, a section across the front there, probably just one large door similar to that. I, I don't see there's enough room there really for the two. Bring it out to roughly where the mark is on the floor there for the <clears throat> water and grey water behind front. Also going to go through the floor so you've got an option of into the grey or directly out to the floor. <clears throat> uh, door maybe between that locate that hole there in the floor and there coming back to six eight inches here you can still get to storage but 
uh, it's over complicating it I think putting two doors there and uh, the worked off which will be 15 mil ply on the top there scribed into the window there although it looks as if it's just going to be scribed at the back there that should be fairly easy coming out to there with tea trim on the front the works up uh, I've got a guide to locate later um, for 0 0.8 mil for mica <coughs> which is going to be hard wearing or not <coughs> hard wearing enough for the the work top um, the fridge there the sink I've decided to move slightly over to the right so the outlet for the sink is just past the fridge gives me more room to play with and a damp site easier if anybody needs to get to any any of the units at a later date so next job I'm going to do the sections And the control board there, 12 volts, uh, voltage display, uh, USB, and five switches there, fused. I'm going to put that, might go high up there, or I might come sort of lower down, not too sure yet, with something to cover the back. So maybe there, something to cover the back to hide all of this so you can just take it off and get to it if needed for the fuses sometimes I use a fuse 12 volts um, basically negative positive and you can run all the wiring off it and fuse in each individual one with this build I'm going to use this never used one of these before but it looks pretty straightforward power in power out supply to the fuse uh, this is for the diesel heater controller that's run around the back there. I may trunk it. I've got some cable trunking, although that looks okay as it is. Uh, that's the controller. It doesn't quite reach. So I'm going to extend it from there and have it next to the main fuse board there. So you'll have the two items there. You can control everything from there. Fridge there. What's I got? pack of six LED lights um, if you look at a couple of my old videos I've done them before they're circular one two three across here one two three across there linked to a main board uh, with a remote uh, for this build I think I'm going to put them coming from here or maybe there with the wire going through it'll be easy just to pull those down with the connector board maybe to secure to the back of this for easy access um, Obviously, you've got a remote. Uh, I may put one inside the cupboard there in the centre, so I'll illuminate that, which is useful. Because inside a lot of these, they're normally quite dark. And solar for the roof coming through to looking into it. Not done solar before. I'm not too sure. Well, obviously, you can charge your leisure battery, but I'm not too sure if you can run it to split it to the the main battery because um, from my experience one of them goes flat while you're out so it'd be good to get a solar panel um, just looking into uh, well, obviously I need a flexible solar panel because it's a T4 whether it's one or two that seems pretty straightforward but it's the it's not so much the watts it's the amps uh, hopefully 20 to 30 maybe should be enough um, yeah just looking into that It's a hole for the fuse board switches. Uh, I think it's 13 by 7 centimetres, which just goes around the pieces there. That can be fitted. Let's see if I can do this one handed. GoPro holder and there's a wire stuck there basically but that goes there or it's going there and then the controller for the diesel heater take a small nick out of that so that wire is hidden that's either going to go there or there look 
over there or there? It's probably there. Then I can cover the, actually there, I'll cover that then behind with a box. That's the fuse board and the diesel heater controller fitted. The double USB there, readout of the leisure battery. 12 volts, switches for lights, fridge, water pump, etc. And when it's wired in, you've got the diesel heater controller there, power, heat, settings. So, quite like the way that's worked, because behind, I can run the cables down the, the other side of this. There, <coughs> rear for lights, when I've got the rear lights. I've got a touch um, light, reading light, to go on the back there. That can come round and into this. Can all, all the wires then can be hidden. Um, and the back, I think the a sh uh, top section to this, just inside that, a couple of inches down, and then run this across here and box it in. So, rear touch USB at the bottom light. Fitted those before, they're good. Obviously, reading light in bed or something, you just touch it and that's it, off. Okay, still raining, so I'm gonna go for the, the lighting, which is these. You have a pack of six LEDs that go into a main junction box that I'm gonna have just behind here. And you get a LED controller, receiver and sender there. I sort of try and fix that here so you can operate it from there, take it off, <clears throat> use it independently. Um, yep, yeah, so this is obviously the main living area, so I'm going to put one here, one there. Obviously, you've got a good light for the cooking. One here, one here, this side. I've worked out I can go across to the junction box underneath this. That gives good access lighting. I'm going to put one here, which will light up the inner cupboard for changing the gas, water, and one in the centre of that panel at the top, which will light up either side of the top sections. And when you take that out, you can get to the leisure battery. It'll also give you a bit of light in there. Uh, the back should be okay you can touch led light there and the original van light or fitted leds into those so yeah still raining lighting okay that's the lighting <clears throat> led lighting again basically these little leds you've got the Semi-transparent outer case screw. Is that screw on? And what I've done here is just drop the drop the roof lining cable behind. Take the centre part section from the roof. That one luckily runs good. One. in there between the two top sections and light that up and two here over the unit area and one <coughs> which will be in the cupboard might move that to the upper section of the cupboard well, you get the idea it'll light it up so next job hide these wires connect it to the main centre box there, 12 volts in, 6 running off it. Okay, let's see LEDs all fitted. The securing fixings back in, cables behind here. Same with the ones by the side sliding door. Cables through the main 
point where they all go in is there. 12 volt cable coming off it, that will be double sided taped to inside here and it'll be done by a kill switch on the board. So now it's not raining, units. Okay, until tomorrow I've managed to get the fridge unit in. That's basically tea trimmed on the front there and underneath. Obviously I've got to have a cutout here for the sink until that's close to it and I'm measuring it off. I'm not cutting it otherwise I don't want to do too much. I'm going to put something on this and it'll be ready for the unit at the top. This is the flooring I'm using. It's uh, normally twice as long as that peel off stick down. The floor has to be clean for that. Uh, I think I'm going to do the floor tomorrow. Put the front across here, one or two doors on the front there. Same as this. And covered, obviously and then the worktop cut ready on with that and then <clears throat> and then that's the units done obviously it all needs fixing in with these L brackets on the bottom here going inwards for good finish uh, yeah good day LEDs done diesel heater Controller in, fuse board switches, touch, reading lamp, all the wires hidden away. Top section there is the controller for the lighting. I've got to put the remote reader up there, which the remote reads and obviously puts the lights on and off. So, yeah, happy with that. I'll get the floor down tomorrow, get that done. And uh, yeah, cracking on. Till tomorrow.